Hello, friends and family. Dr. Ken Mary with you for the next hour or so. Going to hang out. We're going to have a food fight this Saturday. We're going to talk about a proper human diet and foods that human beings should actually prioritize eating and other highly processed junk food that the big corporations love to sell you, but that isn't actually nutritious at all. I've been watching the comments while I was waiting to go live. I saw where Jim's lost 40 pounds since November 1. Diane's lost 48 pounds since Fe uh, February 7th. When you stop eating things that slowly poison and inflame your body and give you too many carbohydrates, and you start eating things that give you all the amino acids, fatty acids, vitamins, and minerals your body needs, your body actually starts to heal and you start to get rid of excess stored fat, you start to get rid of chronic inappropriate inflammation, you start to urinate away unhealthy stored water that you don't need. Miraculous things, seemingly miraculous, things start to happen when you adopt a proper human diet. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Tim. Uh, welcome, everyone. Tell me, tell me where you guys are watching from. I'm going to be with you for the next hour answering questions. What city, what state, what country? I want to see where you're at. I've got my spidey, spidey sense decaf with some goat butter in it to give me superhuman strength. Man, you guys are all over the place. I see neighbors from Tennessee, somebody from Iceland. Wow. Uh, Love it, love it, love it. Oh, we got some super chats coming in. All right. Let's see. Let's get started. Mr. Monty says, hey, Dr. Barry, I think I have quite bad constipation four months into carnivore. Currently eat around 900 grams of steak and six eggs a, a, a day. What am I doing wrong? I tend to... Use the loo once a week. Thanks. So, Mr. Monty, you're probably not doing anything wrong. Just because you're not pooping as much as you once did does not mean you're constipated. Okay. What just and so let's let's talk about poop. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way. I didn't bring it up. Mr. Monty did. What is poop? What is that? It's waste. It's stuff that your body cannot use or does not need. Okay. Now, if you're eating a highly processed, high-carb diet with lots of fiber, taking Metamucil several times a day, you're going to make lots of poop because you're eating lots of crap that your body does not want and does not need. So you might have three gigantic poops a day that smell so bad that the neighbors file, a, file an odor complaint with the county health department. Okay. But when you adopt a nutrient-dense, ancestrally appropriate, low-carbohydrate diet, the stuff that you're putting into your mouth is actually food. And maybe we should redefine what, what the word food actually means. It means stuff that your body needs and can use and that doesn't cause inflammation and doesn't cause blood sugar spikes and insulin spikes. That's, that's what real food is. And so, Mr. Monty, stop eating all the unnecessary fiber, all the carbs, all the starches. So he doesn't make as much poop anymore because what he's consuming, he eats steak and eggs. You understand, everybody listening, think about this. Is there is there any waste in steak and eggs? No, it's 100% pure nutrition for human beings. Think about that. So if you're not eating lots of unnecessary, potentially harmful waste, are you going to make as much poo when you go to the loo? No, you're not. And it's very common for people when they adopt a, a meat-heavy ketogenic diet or a ketovore diet or a carnivore diet to say, you know, I used to poop twice a day every day and it was a lot and it stunk really bad. And now I poop once every other day and it's just a little bit. And I often when I wipe, there's nothing there and there's just there's almost no smell. My spouse doesn't even know when I've went to the loo to poo. That's going to be my new rhyme for the day. I just made that up with the help of Mr. Monty. 
So uh, the, the definition of constipation, Mr. Monty, is that you have pain with a bowel movement or you you have to strain really hard or you're having bleeding or you're having spasms or you're having abdominal cramping. You're having abdominal distension because your belly's full of poo. But you're not having any of those things. You're just not going to the loo as often as you once did. For most carnivores, they, they have a small poo once a day. Some go once every other day. Some once every third day. Uh, Mr. Monty goes once a week. And he doesn't have any pain, any problems. And that's because he's literally not eating any waste. The only thing he poos out are dead bacterial cells that have died in his gut, uh, dead epithelial cells that have sloughed off, and then whatever little bit of waste that his that his uh, body has put into his large intestine. That's that's all he's pooping out. He doesn't need he doesn't need to go every day. Now, if you're having any pain or cramping or bleeding or any of that, Mr. Monty, go see your primary care doctor because you may have something else going on. But if you're if you're not having any symptoms or any pain, you just poop way less than you used to. Congratulations. Welcome to the tribe. That is the lot of someone eating a proper human diet. They don't have to go to the, the John two or three times a day. Isn't that cool? Mark, anterior tibialis tendonitis from years of inactivity. Ketivore for six months plus walks five times a week. It's not getting better yet. Maybe a little worse. What do I do? Sounds like you've already been to a healthcare provider, Mark. Because uh, uh, maybe you Google that name. I don't know. But uh, tibialis tendonitis it can really, really be painful. Uh, make sure your ketovore, so we know you've eliminated almost all the inflammatory things from your diet, but make sure you're not eating something that might still be causing some inflammation for you, but it's probably time to go back to see the doctor again. I would start putting a heating pad on uh, your, your tibia uh, for at least an hour a day. You don't want to put ice packs. That's going to slow down the healing process. You want to put a heating pad as hot as you can stand it right across the affected area. And uh, you don't want to take anti-inflammatories. That's going to slow down the healing process. If it hurts super, super bad, then you might want to take some acetaminophen just when the pain is severe. Thanks for the super chat. JC, my uric acid is 10, but I have had no gout flare-up. How do I lower it? JC, you probably just started a proper human diet not too long ago, you're going to notice that the longer you do this way of eating, the lower your uric acid is going to be. And you're probably still not going to have a gout attack because eating lots of meat and eggs and seafood does not cause gout. And yes, I know WebMD, eat this, not that. Everybody in the world says that eating meat, eating seafood, eating foods high in purines causes gout. Seems like I'm sometimes the lone voice in the wilderness saying, no, no, that doesn't cause gout. Too much fructose, too much chronic inappropriate inflammation, too much alcohol. That's what causes gout. I've got a, a video on this channel about gout. JC, I got you. I got you. I got you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, physical therapy. Uh, but but heat and and don't stop moving the area for any of you guys who who have a little chronic injury like that. Stanny says greetings from Bulgaria. Thank you for changing our lives for the better. Thanks, Stanny. Great to talk to you over in Bulgaria. I'd love to visit one of these days. Nora says, what if your protein is high in your blood? Ferritin and antitrypsin. Um, so most likely, Nora, your protein in your blood is not high. It's probably completely normal. Um, ferritin and antitrypsin can be elevated for many, many causes. Not, uh, it's virtually never because you just have too much protein in your blood. Uh, Kimberly, is it safe to take evening primrose? Yep. It is. I don't expect any magical benefits, but it is. It's perfectly safe to take that if you like. Hello, Joe from Greece. You guys are all over today. LeBron says, 34 year old, six foot one, 270 pounds, low testosterone, insulin resistance, pre diabetes, taking testosterone shots. Do I need the shots with Ketivore? 
Maybe, maybe not. Uh, many people, when they adopt a proper human diet, LeBron, uh, meat heavy keto or ketovore or carnivore, they notice that they get a, a testosterone increase anywhere from 50. I've seen up to 400 points from just stopping the slow poison, high carb crap that you were eating and eating lots of fatty meat and eggs. And then also if, if you start lifting heavy things, LeBron, all that together, you may raise your testosterone enough that you won't need the testosterone shots anymore. You may, you may not. I'm not saying you will, but you 100% are going to reverse your prediabetes. Within three weeks to three months, your prediabetes will be gone. Your insulin resistance is going to continue to improve. Uh, just be patient. Keep eating your meat and eggs. Her Herb says, where is your Spanish channel? So for those of you who don't know, I started a Spanish langu language channel. And it's basically my videos that I paid someone to dub into uh, uh, Latin American Spanish. It's not it's not Castilian Spanish. And, and if you just go to YouTube and search for Dr. Barry in Espanol, in being E-N, in Espanol. I've got three videos posted there. Now we're posting a new video each week. As soon as I can get them dub dubbed and translated, we're posting them. Uh, because I've had so many people reach out and say, my tío, my abuela, my hermano, I just can't get them. They, want, they, they, they don't speak good English, so they can't listen to your channel. They won't listen to me. So I have taken it upon myself to basically put out every single video of mine with a uh, Spanish speaker dubbed over it so that it's easy to listen to. You don't have to read subtitles. Dr. Barry, in Espanol. And that's where it is. And we'll be posting at least one new video every week there. Um, so thanks, thanks for bringing that up. And I hope, I hope if any of you guys have a a, a native Spanish speaking friend or family member, I hope you share that video with them because that way they can listen to it in their native language, and that the comprehension and the retention is just much higher that way. Lisi says, "Is it normal if I fart a lot on keto?" Probably, uh, Lisi, if you're eating a very high veg keto, which some authorities out there recommend, and you're eating just seven to 10 cups of salad or you're eating just mountains of broccoli, yeah, you're going to fart a lot. Absolutely. Uh, I, I don't recommend that style of keto for most people. I think that a meat heavy, fatty meat heavy keto is a much preferable. And also you're going to fart a lot less with a meat heavy keto. Peter says, how do I cure my acne? Peter, I've got two videos on this channel about acne and what you can do to address the root cause of acne, which is chronic hyperinsulinemia and chronic inappropriate inflammation. Two, I've got at least two videos on this channel. You can watch as soon as this live is over. Donna, I've been eating ketovore for eight weeks. I can now stand from the floor without grunting. See, it's those small, non-scale victories. You're like, I've never thought about that. I, I have to rock like this to get up off the couch, or I have to be like, Ugh! when I'm getting up off the floor. Donna doesn't have to grunt anymore when she gets up off the floor. Isn't that cool? Her A1C went from 6.1, which is pre-diabetic, and now it's currently 5.5, which is perfect. But my cholesterol is high. My doc just put me on a cholesterol medicine because my LDL cholesterol went up. I've got videos on this channel, uh, Donna, that will help you understand the cholesterol and the LDL cholesterol conundrum. Dr. David Diamond, a good friend of mine, he's got lots of YouTube videos to help you understand. While your doctor's ignoring the important stuff, which is you reversing your prediabetes and improving your overall mobility, those things are huge, huge, huge victory for you, Donna. But all your currently ignorant doctor wants to focus on is your LDL cholesterol. Ignorant. And that's that's not calling somebody a mean word. That has a specific definition. Look it up if you don't know. I didn't call her, her doctor stupid or moronic. I called her doctor ignorant, which means currently that doctor does not know about this. And hopefully Donna, by continuing to transform her health, will teach her doctor and then her doctor can take better care of all the other patients who currently trust that doctor, even though they might maybe shouldn't. Well done, Donna. Well done. 
Tired looking for name. Dear Dr. Barry, at what age the goat milk is good for babies? So goat milk is goat milk, sheep's milk, and camel's milk. <clears throat> Not joking. Those three are the, the, the closest of any of the animal milks to human milk. They are the least inflammatory. They cause the least speeding up. They cause the least gastritis. They cause the least gastrointestinal inflammation and upset for little babies. And so it is perfectly fine. Uh, Beckett drinks goat milk exclusively now. Uh, Nisha, she breastfed him exclusively for, for two years. He started solid food. His first solid food was meat when he was about five months old. And he drank breast milk as his only liquid up until he was about two, and then we weaned him off onto goat's milk. That's what he drinks every day. And he'll drink goat's milk until he's about four or five years old. And then we'll wean him off that, and he'll drink water because that's what human beings are supposed to do. But goat milk is fine. If you can't find infant formula, if any doctor tells you, oh, goat milk can be dangerous, that's ignorant. Sorry. Goat's milk, sheep's milk, camel's milk, depending on where you live in the world, those are the three milks that humans have used for literally thousands of years. If something happened to the mom, if there was no wet nurse available, if they had to feed an infant human and there was no breastfeeding woman who could do it, goat's milk, sheep's milk, camel milk, that's what it was. And those babies, obviously that's not as good as breast milk. But I can damn well bet you it's better than any formula on the planet. Dave Moore, when I was five weeks into carnivore, metabolic panel showed a calcium of 11, was eating lots of cheese and heavy whipping cream in the beginning, have cut all of that out, should calcium improve? No, Dave, calcium metabolism is much, much more complicated than that. Your cheese and your heavy cream had nothing to do with your calcium being 11. You almost certainly have something called hyperparathyroidism. And if your doctor is not already checking your parathyroid glands, then uh, write down this. You need to have an intact PTH checked and you need to have an ionized calcium checked. And you need a scan of your parathyroid glands, which sit right behind your thyroid gland proper. Uh, uh, the, 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 there, there's worse things that could cause high calcium. The most common thing is hyperparathyroidism. It's quite common. It's very often missed by uh, the average doctor. Uh, the other thing that can cause a high calcium is, is cancer. But the odds are you just have a parathyroid gland that's overfunctioning. So you need to have those two tests checked and a scan of your parathyroids. And maybe um, you might need to look for a new doctor if your doctor wasn't concerned about your calcium level of 11. But the cheese and heavy cream did not cause that. Good question. Good question. Angelic Annihilator. Uh, anxiety disorder hasn't changed much on carnivore. What is the safest med that is not an SSRI or a benzo? Maybe hydroxyzine or the atypical antipsychotics. Uh, Angelic Annihilator, I, I'm, I'm glad that you know that SSRIs and benzos are not the answer because they're not. They barely have any effect over and above placebo. And they have a long list of potential side effects and complications. And there is a definite, definite withdrawal that goes along with those. Hydroxyzine is an antihistamine. If, if you take a low dose occasionally, that might be okay. But the atypical antipsychotics, I would not touch with a 20-foot pole. You're, I want you to use your diet, which you're already doing. I want you to look into CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. And if you thought I said CB, CBD, then yes, you can also look into CBD or THC. Uh, all of which are going to have been shown to give better benefits than the atypical antipsychotics for just generalized anxiety or social anxiety disorder. Uh, also realize that it's not pathology if you're just an anxious person. Some people are super laid back, almost to a fault. 
Some people are more anxious and wound tighter. That's not pathology. Think about that. There's a normal distribution curve of this. Some people over here on this end with me are so laid back, they could see smoke coming from the, the air vent and be like, no, oh, it's probably fine. Probably nothing to worry about. And just go on with their life. That's me. I never check the door to see if I locked it. I never check to see if I turned the stove off. And you know what comes from that? Sometimes Nisha Solace Hyphen Berry says, did you mean to leave the stove on? And I'm like, no, I forgot to turn it off. Or sometimes we'll come home from a trip and the door's been unlocked the whole time. So there are good things for being laid back like me, but there are also drawbacks. But that doesn't mean it's pathology. That doesn't mean I need a pill to be more conscientious. I either need to grow up or just get over it. But in the same respect, there are people on the other end of this curve who are more anxious, more fastidious, more they're double checkers, triple checkers. But that doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. That's actually good because you will never leave the stove on. You will never, ever leave your house and leave the front door unlocked like I've done many times. That doesn't mean you necessarily need a pill, angelic annihilator. Think about that. I'm not, I'm not saying you don't need medication. I'm saying you might not. You might be thinking of just your personality as pathology. And very often, I don't think it is. I think, I think it's good that you're anxious in that respect because you're never going to leave the front door unlocked when you go somewhere. Sandy, Dr. Barry, you are awesome. Thanks for all you do. Sandy, thank you so much for the super chat and thanks for saying that. I appreciate it. Pursue health. What is your advice for AFib? My husband is newly diagnosed and put on meds, which he would rather not be on. So AFib can be quite complicated. There can be aberrant tracts of uh, electrical wiring in the heart. There can be chronic inappropriate inflammation of the SA node, which leads to the AFib. And that's why so many people, when they adopt a meat-heavy keto diet or a ketovore diet or a carnivore diet, which are the three most uninflammatory diets in the world, for many people, their AFib gets better, gets much less severe. And that's because they cleared up the chronic inappropriate inflammation that was irritating their SA node. Now, if you have an aberrant electrical tract, you're going to have to have a procedure to have that uh, bladed. But if that's not what you got, if it's just like, oh, we don't know why you have it, you just have it, then 100% ketovore, carnivore, for 90 days straight, very strict, and, and see if the AFib doesn't get so much better that your husband can either decrease some of the medication or stop it altogether working with your doctor, of course. Good question. Philippines, cheeks, type two, quit drinking alcohol one year ago, was a very heavy drinker. Now I drink up to 20 cups of sugar-free coffee with stevia added per day. Is this okay for type two? Uh, so Philippines, what I first want to talk about is your diet. Uh, if, if you are still type two diabetic since a year ago, then you're still eating too many carbohydrates for your personal physiology. I want you to focus on your diet. Okay. The coffee and the stevia might raise your blood sugar, maybe a, a tiny bit, might raise your insulin a tiny bit, but they're never going to raise it enough to keep you a type two diabetic. Okay. You need to focus on what's important here. I don't care if you drink 20 cups of coffee a day. Um, there's no research really done on 20 cups a day. That might, might not be good for you, but if you're drinking three, four, five cups of coffee a day, that's that's background noise. That's never going to hurt you, regardless of what that guru may have told you. But you got to reverse your type 2 diabetes or you're going to have disastrous long-term complications. BK Morrison. Hey, Dr. Barry, I'm a big fan from Canada. Hey, BK, how's it going? I was wondering about whole cream and grass-fed butter that I use for my coffee. How much does it impact or cause inflammation in the body? So there's two kinds of protein in milk. There's casein, and then there's lots of different kinds of waves. 
whey is the liquid kind of protein. So if you if you use heavy cream to make butter, that cloudy liquid left over, that's all the different ways. OK, casein is the is the protein that stays when you make cheese. It stays in the cheese. Uh, it's also in the, the heavy cream. OK, some of us are quite the, the casein in heavy, heavy, even heavy whipping cream, but definitely single cream or whole milk or half and half is going to have enough casein that for some of us, it's going to cause inflammation. If we are adult humans, remember, Milk is for baby mammals. That's what milk is for. And uh, three quarters of the world population becomes lactose intolerant after the age of five or six. They can't tolerate lactose. But the other, out of the other 25%, many of them can't tolerate the casein after four to five years of age. And so I would recommend you stop the, the, the heavy cream if you feel like you're having inflammation and just use the butter. Butter and ghee are just the fat out of the dairy. There's, there's virtually no protein left. There's definitely no carbs left. It's just the fat. And the fat from dairy seems to be okay and uninflammatory for the vast majority of humans on the planet. But if you're using heavy cream currently, all you guys listening, if you're using heavy cream and you're like, no, I'm losing fat. I feel better. I'm doing great. My waist is shrinking. Keep using your heavy cream. That's fine. But if you stall, if you're having weird inflammation, like what's going on? It's probably the, the casein left over, the casein remnant in the, the heavy cream. And there's also ways in the heavy cream as well. And the way you can know that is to use your heavy cream to make butter. When you get the big solid hunk of butter and you take it out, there's going to be cloudy liquid left. That's the way in the water that was still in the heavy cream. Heavy cream is not protein free. It's got casein and whey in it. Good question. Thank you. Cindy, I just had an echocardiogram. Result is severe calcification of the aortic valve affecting uh, left and right coronary cusp. What can I do? You're gonna have to you're gonna have to follow the guidelines of your cardiologist, Cindy. Now, definitely, do you still need to convert to and stick to a proper human diet consisting of lots of fatty meat, lots of eggs with yolk? Yes, 100%. You need that. But depending on how calcified the valve is, how incompetent it has become, you may need to have the valve replaced. So you need to talk to your cardiologist and, you're, and probably you're going to see a cardiothoracic surgeon, at least for a consult. Uh, you need to talk to them about what you need to do about the, the, the anatomy of this. Uh, the, this calcification was caused by your decades of eating a high carbohydrate, highly inflammatory crap diet that you didn't know better than to eat. Now you're stuck with this. You definitely need a proper human diet, but you also need to follow up with your doctors about this. All right. Great questions, guys. Feel free. If you think some of the information we're talking about would help your friends or family members, feel free to share this video with them. You can share this on your favorite social media. That's how we're going to change the world, folks, is me and you. We cannot hold our breath and wait on the American Diabetes Association to, to come out formally and say keto is the way for anybody with prediabetes or type 2 diabetes or type 1 diabetes or LADA or MODY. They're never going to ha have that press conference. It's up to me and you to reach out to the people with that we care about, people we love who are suffering with prediabetes or diabetes and say, hey, there's a better way. You do not have to eat all those carbs and then shoot all that insulin or take this handful of pills. That is not the way. There is a better way. That's why I always encourage you guys to share this video because how many of you guys learned about this way of eating because somebody shared a video on their social media? And you're like, who? what is that? Some redneck doctor talking about bacon won't kill me. Hmm, I'm going to listen to him. That's how, that's how we reach new people is when you share this video, there's a share button right down there. You can share it on your favorite social media right now. It won't interrupt anything. I'll keep right on talking. Ah, here's a good question. Zip, zip, Zippor 88. Is there any oil that is okay to fry food in? Yeah, there's a list. You can fry food in bacon grease. You can fry it in butter at low temp. You can fry it in beef tallow as, as high as you want to fry it. You can fry it in sheep tallow, goat tallow. 
You can fry it in duck, duck, uh, duck fat, goose fat, any animal fat. You can fry food in it. It is freaking delicious and it is good for you. Okay. Uh, if you want to use a, a, a plant-based oil, then coconut oil, avocado oil, olive oil. But do not fry in olive oil at high temperatures. Coconut and avocado can take the higher temperatures. Olive oil cannot. You pretty much use, need to use um, olive oil at room temperature if you, if you just want to eat it. I don't think there's anything magical about coconut oil, avocado oil, or olive oil. And indeed, if you're not very careful and buy a reputable brand, the, the olive oil that you think you're buying from the big box store has probably been cut half and half with canola oil, and you're not aware. Ashley, I have not tried bear fat, but I 100% would try bear fat. What's the weirdest fat any of you guys have ever fried anything in? Bear fat. I mean, yeah, I would try some bear fat 100%. Kendi said, no, wait. Candy says, how is Nisha doing? I've not seen her online in a while. So uh, Nisha, my wife, who's a registered nurse, is currently 32 weeks pregnant. And even though she still looks amazing, I mean, this woman is the hottest 32-week pregnant woman I've ever seen. Not joking. She, does, she, she feels 32 weeks pregnant. She's ready for this pregnancy to be over. She's kind of a little down. She's kind of like, oh, I'm just ready to get this baby out and get my life back. Uh, Nisha's always been very beautiful, very trim, and it, it, it messes with her head. You, you guys know how it is. When your body is not looking like you want it to look, it messes with your head. And so she, she hasn't been very active online. I tried to, I told her, we'll, me and her will do a live on her channel together. Um, Tell me in the comments if you think we should do that. But she's she physically, uh, medically, she's totally fine. The baby's healthy. The baby kicks. Uh, you know, Renezme from the vampire movies? That's how this little baby girl kicks. I mean, literally sometimes I've got my hand on Nisha's belly. And this baby girl who's been fed meat and eggs the entire time she's been inside kicks my hand off of her belly. It's ridiculous how hard this baby is kicking Nisha. And so she kicks nonstop. Yeah, the, I mean, she's Kathy, she's gorgeous. Gorgeous pregnant woman. I, I think she's so sexy, but she ain't feeling it right now. Rebecca says, yes, a video together. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try um, to get her to do a live on her channel, and you guys can give her some love. Thank you, Ashley, for the super chat. Yeah, she's my number one crush as well. Uh, yes, she's pretty awesome. All right, Mitzi, we'll do it. We'll do it. Yeah, she is priceless. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade her for 10 supermodels. I can tell you that. Ah, uh, low carb, low drama. Hey, I love that handle. Question. Confirmed carrier of the HFE gene, uh, H63D. Having this gene means I ha have hemochromatosis, iron levels 15. Transferring 2.07, sat, uh, iron saturation 31, ferritin 431. Uh, my doctor had no answer. Okay, so at least your doctor was honest and said, I don't know. That's actually a good sign. You need to ask your doctor to refer you to a hematologist, which is a blood specialist. Okay, because with your, with your levels and being what they are and with you having this positive gene, you may have hemochromatosis. There are several other things that could be that are much more rare, but you need to see a blood specialist. And um, for, go, when you see your doctor again, say, hey, look, I want to thank you for being honest and saying you didn't know. But then also I want to yell at you because if anytime you don't know, you should refer me to someone who does. That's what the referral process is for. If I as a doctor don't know or can't fix it, it's kind of my duty to refer you to somebody who does know and who can fix it. A little house cleaning there for any healthcare providers that may be on the live. I'm getting more and more healthcare providers who are, who are joining this. And like, I had a guy reach out to me on Twitter uh, the other day. I'm, I'm going to read you this comment. This is how good this is. This guy has badgered me on Twitter for years. Every time I post something, he'd be like, yeah, 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 plant-based diet. This is dumb, blah, blah, blah. And then the other day, he sends me a private message. Let me see if I can find this. 
Where is this? You you guys are going to love this. But this is a sign of a, 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 a rational health care provider. Hey, Dr. Barry, I have to admit, here's the message right here. I'm not going to give his name because it took a lot of gumption for him to send me this message. So I'm not trying to make fun of him. I'm just trying to say healthcare providers are waking, waking up to this at all levels, the nurse level, the mid-level provider, the, the MDs, DOs. Hey, Dr. Barry, I have to admit that it's been a struggle to accept that the carnivore diet is a healthful eating pattern. But I've been on it for nine months now and feeling better than I have in the last two decades. This is a healthcare provider. And I'm pretty sure that less than nine months ago, he was giving me some shit on Twitter, even though he was secretly experimenting with carnivore diet. You won't get any more heckling from me. In fact, I was just on Dr. Baker's podcast, and I'll be an advocate for anyone interested in meat-based diets. Respect. That's from a, a healthcare provider. After years of giving me crap on Twitter, he's now like, hey, you're you're right. So, yeah, I'm going to glow a little bit, but I, I, I sent back a message. I said, thank you so much. I'm so glad to hear you're feeling better. I'm not trying to be an asshole. Because now this healthcare provider who used to lash out at me on Twitter, every single patient he comes in contact with, think, think that through. Used to, he's like, plant-based diet, oh, eat uh, fruit smoothies, whole grain breads. What's he going to tell every single patient he comes into contact with now for the rest of his career? He's going to teach them how to eat a proper human diet. You tell me that ain't powerful. People say, oh, you're wasting your time on Twitter. Just this one win alone. How many thousands of patients is he going to interact with over the rest of his career? And he's actually changed his handle uh, on uh, Twitter now. Regenerative Agriculture for Animals, Planet, and Health. Carnivore since August 2021. You don't think that makes my day? Because I'm happy to help one person at a time. But if I can if I can wake up a healthcare provider, I'm going to help thousands of people. Every every patient they ever touch for the rest of their career, they're gonna they're gonna approach that patient differently, and they're gonna give them different and better nutrition advice. That's why I do this 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 thing right here that I'm doing, and that's why you never know when you hit that share button whose life you're going to change. Pretty powerful, right? This is a big deal. This is real life we're playing with here, guys. <laughs> Sunny Star says, now if you could convince Jillian Michaels. So Jillian, is a, she's a great fitness instructor. She's wonderful at that. But when it comes to human nutrition, she currently is just about as ignorant as they come. Now she knows not to eat highly processed, you know, Cheetos and Lucky Charms and drink Pepsi and eat Ding Dongs all day and eat Doritos all day. She knows better than that. So she's not completely ignorant, but I think she's too financially vested probably to ever wake up. It's just, it's going to cost her too much money. If she has to go back and tell all those people that she sold those nutrition courses to, and that all the people that have bought her books that are full of nutrition advice, can you imagine if she had to get on Twitter and be like, y'all, I was wrong about all that shit. I'm sorry. I know I wasted your money. I know I built this big mansion and I got this, all the, you know, this, this expensive car off your back, basically by misleading you. I, I thought I was right, but I was not right. I mean, she'll get some backlash. That's why you don't need to hold your breath and wait for the American Heart Association to come out and say, yeah, meat heavy keto is the way. That's what all humans should eat. Fully, fully laden swallow. Uh, hey, Dr. Barry, are you going to do a live with Dr. Saladino? Thanks as always. Yeah, I've been, uh, you guys have asked for that. I've been chatting with, with Paul, my friend, Dr. Saladino, and we're going to set up a live here in the near future, the next few months. Yep, that's going to happen. But let's let's get back to my my uh, former 
Twitter enemy, my twin enemy, is that what that would be? Who's now my Twitter ally. How powerful is that when you when you're able to you and you, you guys, how many of you guys have woke your doctor up to the point where your doctor is now OK with you eating at least low carb, if not keto, keto or carnivore? Tell me in the comments if you if your doctor is now on board with and saying things like whatever you're doing is working, just keep doing it. Uh, I'm actually experimenting with keto myself. If your doctor has been saying anything like that, tell me in the comments because I want everybody to see that. Mitzi's about to wake up her nutrition professor. That's right. If Mitzi's successful and she actually teaches her nutrition professor about a proper human diet, can you imagine the power of that? The magnification effect out into thousands, every student that, that he or she teaches for the rest of their career, and then everybody they teach for the rest of their career. That's powerful. That's powerful right there. Michelle says, my cardiologist is on board with keto. Old fat gamer says, I wish I wish mine would. Mine's just screaming at me about statins. Yeah, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> Tonya says, my doctor's an absolute idiot. Mandy's doctor says, keto, yes, carnivore, no. Just give them time. That's a slippery slope from keto right on into carnivore. Trust me. Mariana, I didn't know your nickname was Mitzi. That's cool. 77 Whites Island says, keto and carnivore help my severe rheumatoid arthritis and severe depression. How many of you guys listening right now have never considered that maybe your arthritis is just chronic inappropriate inflammation from the diet you're eating? Think about that. But how many of you have not considered that your depression, your anxiety, uh, your your OCD may be in part due to the chronic inflammation that the crap foods you're eating is causing in your brain. Musk, M-U-S-C, I've uh, been a PA in gastroenterology for 20 years. That's a physician's assistant. So that's a mid-level provider. Do a good job educating my patients on the proper human diet, but a poor example myself. Did well extended fasting in the past, but fell off the wagon after the death of my mom. I totally understand. Now my A1C is 13.1. This is a healthcare provider, you guys. Triglycerides are in the 600s. Ferritin is 2,800. I've got... Non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. hepatitis. Thanks for all you do and share. Um, you gotta, you gotta get back on on the wagon, okay? People look at you, and so even if you're a healthcare provider and you're giving the right advice, you're saying eat a proper human diet. Patients need to look at you, and they need to see the health in you. You can tell when somebody's A1C is thirteen, my friend. You know that. You can tell, look at somebody across the room and be like, oh, they're unhealthy as hell. And that's how you have to look right now if you've got all this stuff going on. I know you had a huge loss and that hurts bad, but let me ask you a question. What would your mom, that's who you lost, right? If, if she could talk to you right now, what would she tell you to do? Would she tell you to keep wallowing in it and keep eating the shit? Think about that. I bet that's not the advice she would tell you. I bet she would tell you to get your ass up and lead your patients, not only by word, but by example as well, because you're not doing that right now. And I, I love it that you're giving this advice, but I need you looking healthy. I need you feeling healthy because when you look healthy and feel healthy, and then you talk about a proper human diet, can't nobody ignore that. But if you, if you, look and feel like death on a cracker, which is how you have to feel right now. And I know you're down in the dumps. You lost your mom, man. That freaking sucks. But honor your mom. Start and it's forgive yourself right now for all this stupid stuff you've been doing. Let's start tomorrow. When the sun comes up tomorrow, you're going to use your diet to honor your mom that you love. How about that? How about that? How about you start to honor your mom 
and, and, and stop mourning her and start to honor her tomorrow morning with the, with the food you put in your face. And then you can lead your patients not only in word, but also in deed. And there is no stronger advocate than somebody who leads in word and in deed. I know you can do this. You've done it before. Let's do it again. Thanks for the super chat, my friend. It, it's not too late. You can turn this around starting tomorrow morning. Sweet and sound. Question, I have so many symptoms of hypothy. I had labs done because of recurrent miscarriages, tips on what I what to do while I wait on getting results. So you need to drastically cut the amount of carbohydrates you're eating. You need to start eating much more fatty meat, preferably ruminant meat like beef, sheep, goat, camel, reindeer, depending on what part of the world you're in. And you need to probably cut out all liquid dairy and then make sure you get a full thyroid panel checked. That's what you need to do. Conrad, my doctor is still owned by the statin sales guy. Many doctors are, but I promise you guys, I, I promise you, when enough of you guys have went to that doctor and said, hey, I used to have type 2 diabetes. I used to have hypertension. I used to have bad knee arthritis. I used to have terrible GERD. I used to have terrible rosacea. It's all gone now. When they hear that enough times, they're going to they're gonna start. They're going to wake up. They have to. They're either going to wake up or they're going to retire. Either way, you win. Andrea, my doctor said, keep up on keto. It's working for you. Then he asked if it was hard to maintain. I said, no. I remind myself that food is fuel, not entertainment. I like that. Food is fuel, not entertainment, doctor. When you say something like that, like what Andrea said to her doctor, do you guys, you don't want to, you think your doc just ignores everything you say, but when you say something like that, that's profound. That doc was like, huh, never thought of it that way. And honestly, I bet you money, your doctor's never thought of food as anything of that's yummy, that's delicious. Oh, I'm, I can't wait to overeat that. But when they hear a patient, the, the voice of reason that should be coming from the healthcare providers, coming from the patient. That's very incongruous for a doctor. It makes a doctor very uncomfortable. And two th one of two things happens when a doctor gets uncomfortable. They either put their student hat back on and start learning again, or they retire. Either way, I'm happy. Thank you, Tia. Yeah, Kathy, you don't need any carbs at all. If you want to eat carbs occasionally, as long as they're uninflammatory, uh, slow-release carbs, they're probably fine to eat a few, but you don't need any of them. Uh, yes, Lori. Lori says, Dr. B, are you still in contact with Lisa from the reversed television series? Yeah, we we uh, Facebook message almost every day. She just had a new uh, grandbaby She's uh, she's moving. I don't want to give too many details about her private life, but uh, she's still her her uh, type two. She's, I think, currently barely pre-diabetic. She's off all insulin. She's, I think, still taking glucophage. But uh, yeah, she's doing amazing. She's feeling great. She is living a life now that she never thought that she would live again. She's having fun in ways that she never dreamed that she would have fun in again. Gail says, if you're a type 1 diabetic, what insulin would you ask your doctor about? Most uh, type 1 diabetics, Gail, if they can eat low carb enough, they can use just a smidge of a, 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 a nighttime insulin like Lantus or Levmir, <coughs> and then one or two or three units of an immediate acting like Hemolog with a meal if they eat a lot of protein during that meal. And that's it. And they'll, they'll have a beautiful hemoglobin A1C of maybe 5.5. .5, and they're using 90% less insulin than they used to live, use. And the risk of all the terrible complications that type 1 diabetics fall from every day. The risk is back to baseline for those terrible things because they've got their diabetes under control.
Fresh says, I started carnivore, but rosacea keeps coming back. Can I be overly sensitive to something in bacon, uh, eggs, or pork cracklings? I am using uh, the corticosteroid too often. Fresh, I would, I'd probably, if I were you, I would do 90 days of beef, any cut of beef, any, any kind of beef at all, egg yolks, salt, and water. I would do that for, for at least 90 days uh, because it's probably something that you may be overly sensitive to pork. Sounds like you're eating pork from a couple of different uh, sources. For some very few people, it's the whites of uh, supermarket chicken eggs. The, the protein can be a little inflammatory probably because the chickens are misfed and mis mistreated. Um, or if you can find duck eggs or goose eggs or quail eggs. I just put, I just got 60 fertilized quail eggs in the mail yesterday and I put them in the incubator. I'm going to hatch out some more quail. Uh, it won't be long before everybody in my family, the only eggs they eat are eggs that, that, that were raised properly from chickens who are happy running around in the backyard eating bugs and worms and seeds and grass. And the quail, the same way. They, they are in their happy, normal quail environment and they eat quail appropriate food, and that's the only eggs we'll ever eat. I'm trying to get to the point where my production feeds me and all of my immediate and extended family. That's my goal. And maybe we'll start selling eggs. I don't know. What do you think? Should we? McMack says, I'll hit your like button. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. Rita says, does, does true licity raise your insulin? It's an excellent question. Does it? I've got a, a YouTube video on this channel about all of the diabetes medications that work by raising your insulin. Not all of them do. Some of them do. And I'll let you watch that video and then you can answer your own question. Because I, I, rather than just answer your question, I'd rather you learn because then you can help your friends and family. Yeah, Rob, doctors do make the worst patients. That's totally true. Mariana says, yes, sell eggs. Viking Cat says, I'll buy eggs from you. I need 60 at a time. Same for me. Elaine lost 98 pounds, guys. Uh, Karen says, her doctor is Dr. Rob Sivis, so he's okay with keto and carnivore. Excellent. Yes. Yep. Rob's a good friend of mine. He, he knows what a proper human diet is. Let's see. Melissa says, my arthritis pain is gone. I'm 56 years old. I began my keto journey at 50. It's the best thing I've ever done. Yep, 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 exactly. So many people with arthritis in their knee considering knee replacement surgery. Please, please, for the love of God, before you have your knee joint chopped out with a buzzsaw and thrown in the garbage, please do 90 days of the carnivore diet and see how much better your knee pain is. Then if you're still having the pain, you can go ahead and have the surgery. But I predict that your knee will be so much better that you'll call the surgeon and say, you know, you can just go play golf that day because I'm not, I'm not, I don't need any surgery. Tony says, can you do low carb or no carb on fish diet rather than beef? Yeah, you can, Tony. And it wouldn't surprise me if there's not a subset of the human population who would do better on a seafood-based keto diet or ketovore or carnivore. Uh, fish is meat too. And is there anybody currently who does better on a seafood-based keto, ketovore, carnivore diet. I'd love to see your comment because I, I suspect that there's probably, I would guesstimate 5 to 10% of people who they do good on beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, but for optimal health for them because of their DNA, because of their ancestry, uh, maybe for the last 25,000 years, their ancestors have, have been coastal living people 
and got all of their food uh, from the sea. There may be a, a, a subset who does better on a seafood keto. That would not surprise me at all. Yes, John, salmon is salmon is high in cholesterol. Cholesterol is not bad for you. Even the American Heart Association no longer tells people to limit the amount of cholesterol in the foods they eat. Yeah, go look at their guidelines. Used to, they said, no, don't eat more than, what was it, 300 milligrams a day? Now they're, they don't even mention it because they know it's, it's stupid to worry about getting cholesterol in your food. Texas girl in a crazy world does best on a combo seafood. So she, she does best on surf and turf keto carnivore. Somebody watching from Mexico. Shrimp is high in cholesterol too. Yes, it is. Um, that's a good thing. Your body uses cholesterol to make all your hormones. It uses cholesterol to make all your cell membranes. Your brain uses cholesterol. Cholesterol is good for you. Lisa Gardner says, what's the best fish to eat? Uh, I, well, I don't want you to ingest too much mercury. And so the way you avoid getting too much mercury from seafood is you don't eat the very large carnivore fish. So swordfish, the very large tuna, the any of the large fish like that that have basically gotten large because they've eaten thousands of other fish, they tend to accumulate and uh, build up the mercury. And so I try, I stick to small fish like sardines, anchovy, I eat cod liver, um, I, but any small fish, any fish that eats algae or plankton, I eat those fish because they're never going to have concentrated levels of mercury in them. Only the big carnivore fish are going to have concentrated levels of mercury. Yep, Mitzi's exactly right. Cholesterol is no longer a nutrient of concern. Gunner, are canned oysters good? Yes. Any oyster from any source is a superfood, okay? Um, if you can find them uh, high quality raw, I think that's wonderful. If you buy them canned, that's also wonderful. It's steamed, if you, you can actually fry the oysters, if you use Nisha's uh, chicken nugget batter, which is a carnivore batter, to fry them in and then fry them in bacon grease, that would be tasty right there, 100%. Yeah, Boink 800 says oysters uh, equals much zinc, 100%. Pretty much every mineral, oysters are, are jacked up with them. Uh, Kevin says repetitively, do we need to worry about the amount of glucose that our body turns uh, the protein into when we are on a carnivore diet? No, Kevin, you don't. If you're eating a very low carbohydrate diet, then gluconeogenesis is your friend, not your enemy. There are some keto gurus out there who warn against eating too much protein because of gluconeogenesis. And my good friend, uh, Dr. Ben Bickman, who's a PhD researcher, and all he researches is insulin and glucagon and glucose. He says that's foolishness if you're eating a low carb diet. So if you're eating under 50 total grams of carbs a day, no amount of protein is going to turn into a dangerous amount of glucose. Yeah, that's one of those myths out there in the keto sphere that needs to die. Uh, Mariana says, should I bother getting my cholesterol checked then? Yes, I want you to get your lipid panel checked because I'm, I really want to know what your triglycerides are and what your HDL cholesterol is. And those two are contained in, in the lipid panel test. I don't care what your total cholesterol is unless it's very low. That's dangerous. And I don't care what your LDL cholesterol is unless it's very low, which is also potentially dangerous. Uh, but I do want your triglycerides to be very low and your HDL to be high. And you get that by eating lots of fatty meat and eggs with the yolk. Suzanne's watching from Australia. Hey, Suzanne. Michelle's going to the farmer's market, 100%. Please 
look for local sources of eggs and meat, please, all you guys. It's very important that you support your local rancher. That's how we're going to get out from under this potentially disastrous food bottlenecks that we're stuck in right now. David Harvey, is it possible to deliberately put on fat being carnivore without consuming carbs? For instance, if an actor needs to put on excess weight for a character, David, I would not try it. Okay. If, if you're, if your income as an actor depended on you putting on 30, 40, 50 pounds for, to play a specific role, in order to guarantee that you gain that fat as quickly as possible, you need to eat lots of carbs. You need to eat lots of whole wheat bread, lots of fruit smoothies. That's what's going to help you pack on the, the fat pounds for that role. Uh, you're, you're going to be hard pressed to gain a lot, a lot, much weight at all. Definitely not a lot of weight eating a zero carb carnivore diet. I've yet to see anybody do it. And I've actually issued thousand dollar bets before. Um, there was a, a podcaster who I've been listening to for years, who's now a carnivore. But when I first started talking about keto and stuff, he was like, that's some bullshit. I could eat, I could get, I could gain 50 pounds on bacon and ribeye. Bet me. I was like, okay, I bet you a thousand bucks. And he's a smart guy. He knows I don't usually say things like that unless I'm, know what I'm talking about. So he didn't take the bet, but he did try to gain weight. And for 90 days, he literally gorged on ribeye and beef ribs and bacon and eggs. And he, he lost two pounds in the 90 days and he lost like two inches off his waist. <laughs> and now he's a carnivore. He's like, you're right. I don't know why I argue with you. Yeah, that happened. Andy plays games. I have a theory, or I forgot that I heard it somewhere. That happens to me all the time. That people only get skin cancer if they eat seed oils, and therefore their skin is mostly made of bad oils. Then go in the sun too much. Thoughts? Yeah, Andy, I think I think you are 20 years ahead of the American Academy of Dermatology. Because I don't think sun, sun exposure causes cancer. I think if you've built your the cell membranes of your skin cells out of the inappropriate fats that are contained in canola oil, soybean oil, peanut oil, sunflower, safflower, uh, all the inappropriate oils, vegetable shortening, uh, plant butter, don't get me started, then your cells cannot function properly and they they their risk of becoming cancerous increases. The sunlight just provides the energy that the, the malformed cell needs to convert into a cancer cell. Yeah. And I think if we were able to go in, uh, go get in a time machine and go forward 50 years and look at the, the, the state of advice, uh, the, the American Academy of Dermatology would no longer be recommending you to eat lots of vegetable seed oils and stay out of the sun. But we'll see. But yeah, Andy, I think you're onto something there. B. Rowe says it's National Hamburger Day. Is that true? If it is, I'm going to have to celebrate. Boink 800 cold-pressed mustard seed oil uh, is, is okay for external use if you want to put it on your skin as a moisturizer, but I would not recommend eating it in any quantity. Um, the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, mm -mm, nope. I love mustard. But too, too much mustard seed oil, just like uh, walnut oil. I used to be a huge fan of grape seed oil. I thought when I was paleo, what, 10 years ago, I, I stopped using canola and soybean oil. I used grape seed oil. Come to find out when I finally learned something about vegetable seed oils, grape seed oil actually has more omega-6 than canola. Yeah. So just because an oil sounds a little exotic doesn't mean that it's good, okay? Uh, hey, somebody asked about uh, canned cod livers. Let me try, Gunner, hey, uh, any suggestions to improve the flavor? So two things I, I do, one I've been doing a long time is I will mix it with mustard and actually whip it into the mustard. And then I have this really thick mustard and the mustard hides the cod liver flavor. And so then I'll put the mustard on my hamburger. I can't taste the liver. But just the other day, I was thinking about 
uh, brains and eggs. That's a big thing here in the Southern United States is, is every restaurant that cooked breakfast in the past, not anymore, but used to, I'm not talking about McDonald's with their McGriddle bullshit. I'm talking about a real sit down restaurant that would cook you bacon and eggs. You could order eggs and brains and it was pork brains and eggs. And I thought, you know, cod liver's kind of got the same consistency. So I drained a can, rinsed it off, chopped it up in little cubes, and I scrambled it with some eggs. And I could I could taste it a little bit, but it was not bad at all. It was pretty damn tasty. I actually did it again for my second meal yesterday. I had I had eggs and cod liver again. Uh, and so if any of you guys haven't tried to scramble the cod liver in with scrambled eggs, try that. See if you like it. Let me know. Mike does that all the time. Yeah, Mike. I, it just occurred to me. I, I I discovered cod liver and eggs, even though Mike's been doing it for years. <laughs> yeah, I would. Uh, brains and eggs is delicious. Uh, in some groceries, you can still buy a can of brains. They're like a little four ounce can. And you just rinse them, chop them up into little cubes about like the uh, maybe half the size of the standard dice you would gamble with and uh, get the eggs going in the skillet, scrambled, and then just dump the brains in there and scramble it all together. And it's freaking delicious. And if you don't know the nutrition that's in brain, OMG, they are nutrient dense. Okay. And that's 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 the gateway. Once you've tried brains and eggs, you're like, dude, that was delicious. Like, I didn't mind that at all. Then you're like, what else can I mix brains with? Yeah. There's quite a bit of paleoanthropological research uh, that suggests that brains and bone marrow were, that was the first thing when we were, when we were becoming humans. Those were the first things because the average carnivore, like a lion or a tiger, they can't break open the, the calvarium and get to the brains. They can't break open the femur and the humerus and the tibia and get to the marrow. And so when they would eat all the meat and leave, we would go in and take a rock and bash and get the brains and break the big large bones and get the marrow out. There, that's, a, that's a very popular hypothesis in the paleoanthropological community, that that's how we started to grow this big brain of ours. Uh, that hasn't been proven yet, but that's a that's a sexy hypothesis. I like that a lot. So yeah, if you have never tried brains, brains and eggs, that needs to be the way you try it. And I think you'll come away going, hey, I actually like brains. All right, guys. That's it. We're done. Thank you so much. Now, if you had a question for me that didn't get answered, there is a way that you can ask me your question directly. And that's to become a patron on patreon.com. There's a link down in the show notes. You sign up. It's a private protected community. There's uh, about 5,000 people in there now of like-minded people. Nobody's trying to sell you stuff. Patreon never sells your information. You can direct message me your questions. There's a community tab, just like a Facebook page, where you can post your before and after pictures or your non-scale victories. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful, loving tribe over there on Patreon. So check it out. There's a link in the show notes and you can get your questions answered. We do four extra live Q and A's every week inside of our protected Patreon community. And instead of 1800 people asking questions, there's 180 give or take. And so we're able to answer way more questions, way more thoroughly. So if you're not a patron, if you're not part of the tribe, Give that some serious thought because that might be the best money you've spent in a long time. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Thank you so much for sharing this. Thanks for your ongoing support. Thanks for going on this journey with us. And thank you for helping us change the health of the world because that's why I get up every day. See you next time.